Ladies and gentlemen, this morning we received a 12.0 further update official response from Kabam. So this is detailing what they are reviewing at the moment heavily in detail and also kind of giving us a rough time frame of when we can expect uh, some more announcements on changes and stuff that they're addressing. So this, at the moment, amongst a massive pile of crap with the update, seems like a little bit of a glimmer of hope. The huge, huge issue for a lot of endgame players at the moment is the powering and block proficiency. That is the biggest one, because at the moment, with the state of the endgame content, it makes it all about how many units you have, how many potions you can afford for a lot of fights, a lot of encounters, especially, like, I I've seen a lot of people use Red Hulk and also, um... Realm of Legends Winter Soldier as examples of, you know, oh, you can totally play uh, without having to rely on parry because you can just constantly uh, evade special one attacks. However, there are a lot of characters in game that you can't constantly evade special one attacks. We're talking characters like Juggernaut, Unstoppable Colossus, characters like War Machine, Cable, Falcon, any character that now has kind of a rapid fire projectile level one that is not fully evadable. That tactic doesn't work and the tactic for those at the moment when it comes to labyrinth is spend a lot of money and if that is to continue then that's going to be like everywhere it's just it's not good it is not healthy for the game at all i haven't really seen any like super valid counter arguments for uh, the nerf of block proficiency in parry other than it's just a very very clear cash grab so i'm very happy to see uh, in this that they are addressing, while well, the severity of Doctor Strange's nerf, the difficulty tuning of Realm of Legends, Labyrinth of Legends, and other harder content in the game. And finally, the extent of damage players are taking on while parrying. So, I, I don't really like the way that that last line is worded, because I kind of wanted that to say, uh, block proficiency. Like... I'm a little bit worried still about characters like Captain America and maybe they're not being a super hard counter to Rhino because, you know, you can be as good as, at, at, at intercepting as you want, but you're not going to be able to intercept the Rhino when he's always unstoppable charging you. So without having characters that, you know, can play around that, you do have this additional element of BS in the game. So I'm really, really hoping that Kabam, uh, our voice has been heard and that they're going to revert that stuff. However, uh, since the update, I really, you know, uh, my faith in Kabam, like before it was kind of at this level and now it's just, it's all the way to the floor. I just don't have much faith until I actually see uh, patch notes. Like I need to see physical stuff and then I need to see it in game and practice. So, I think it's a step in the right direction. It's a lot better than saying, oh, this was an intended change, full stop, end of story. Uh, you know, the fact that they're heavily reviewing that now and are going to make an announcement on Monday gives me a little glimmer of hope that they have realized, hopefully... Um, via uh, them rapidly dropping on the uh, the grossing app list and also their ratings on the app, Apple Store. They've gone down. At the moment, let's just have a look at the Apple Store. and the US Store, they have... Uh, a lot of one-star reviews, and this comment quite uh, <laughs> made, made me chuckle a little bit, guys. There's some stuff that's a little bit mean, but that one was uh, that one was pretty good. But yesterday on the uh, the i what is it the Google Play Store, they're ranking 242 on the top free games, and today they've sunk down to 304 in terms of their rating. So they're just continually plummeting on there. So I think you know. I think that's been quite an effective way to reach them. Like, personally, like, constructive feedback, we have done a lot of constructive feedback uh, in the initial video expressing my very honest opinions on the patch. And yesterday's video, it was a little bit of, it was a very satirical parody video, but I feel like it effectively communicated the point of, um, like, don't hold the players to an unrealistic standard of playing if nobody in the office can meet that standard. Like, that's that was a very, very obvious point. There are some players that are really, really god-tier interceptors. Like, for example, Romo uploaded a full kill of Red Hulk. However, I... A lot, a lot of people have used that as kind of a counter argument to, um, you know, parry being removed. But the realistic scenario is in a Labyrinth of Legends run where you have to fight anywhere between about 19 to 21 bosses in a single run. For every fight, you're not always going to start on 100%. And the way that Labyrinth of Legends works with its buff is you have something called Mark of the Labyrinth. And it significantly increases the attack of your opponent uh, based on the amount of health you have. So if you revive up at 40%, they have about three 
300 to 400 percent more attack so it means you take an insane amount of damage parrying and for every fight even like on the full kill of red hulk romo was like practically dead he was hanging on by a thread there so if you need to do that, if you need to heal up for every fight, as well as having evade as well, that's that's one of the really big problems with healing up on every fight, is it's still not 100% skill-based in the Labyrinth, because any enemy, when you're using a special attack, especially on Starlord on the Special 2, has a chance to evade that second component, and then just 5 combo you, and you're dead, and if you fully healed up, that's like 200 units, just gone like that. So it's just not a viable option to go forward. So parry does really need to be adjusted. The end game stuff needs to be adjusted but it's just that the whole kind of bulk of the update is that a lot of stuff went live without any testing without any consideration toward how it will affect a lot of players in the end game and that's the biggest outrage for us is just you've dumped all of this crap onto the live server where just so many people have invested so much time so much money so much passion into growing their rosters and progressing in the game and you've put this very just it feels like a developer playground you've pushed that to live and that's the uh that's the biggest problem you've really kind of moved the goalpost you've um you've kind of left all the content at the same difficulty but greatly removed the power from a lot of champions in terms of damage output in terms of not being able to block and parry uh like you used to anymore so that's really the big big frustration is the goalpost has just been moved uh and it's not in a good direction it's in a direction where you know you don't get around it by playing well you get around it by opening your wallet and spending a lot of units on revives and potions so i'm I'm interested to see how this progresses. Uh, throughout the weekend, they say, like, one of the most important things is that the community just keep on playing content and kind of testing, because I, I think that is actually quite important over the weekend to get as many combat logs as possible, because I believe, while I'm not 100% sure, uh, I think Marvel Contest of Champions works very much like an MMORPG, in which when you fight, uh, if you've ever played, like, an MMO like World of Warcraft and added kind of, like, a damage add-on uh, or kind of uh, check the combat log, you can see like exactly how much damage you're taking and i believe developers can access those combat logs and kind of get all that information there so over the weekend we're going to be doing a lot of the end game content in marvel contest of champions we're going to be doing a realm of legends run later this evening uh using some regeneration champions because there are free champions as far as i'm aware that's still pretty viable for uh realm of legends without spending any units maybe on scarlet witch we might have to uh drop a few health potions but she's always been like bs actually there's i don't think there's any way you can kill scarlet witch now without spending uh spending a lot a lot on revives like even with crossbones you're still going to take so much damage from parrying so yeah not really too sure how that run's going to go later but it should be quite interesting to do alive um but yeah there are in terms of like viable characters as well we'll do like some videos talking about them but at the moment you know if you want to you want to play the game and not take not have to worry too much and kind of like counter the damage from parrying on long fights uh wolverine x23 and rogue are, are really really good characters at the moment but again that's created the same problem that you had before the update where you have all the power all the promise in just a few champions uh, but you know the, the problem is after the update like everyone is significantly worse so you've just brought the power level of champions down by quite a bit without compensating in the content at all you've just created exactly the same problem but now everything is worse so we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see what happens, ladies and gentlemen, uh, going forward. But I think one of the most very important messages that I want to, if I communicate anything effectively to you today at all, it's to not spend a dime until this issue of block proficiency gets fully addressed. Like, that's that's what we really need to do at the moment. In terms of, like, the top grossing, both on Google Play and uh, the Apple Store, they are dropping significantly in terms of their ranking. Like, every few hours, they're going down, like, at one spot, and especially kind of at those, like, the, like those top 50 numbers, that is an insane amount of money to be losing. So that's probably the biggest point, is personally, like, I will not be spending a single dime until I have faith that Kabam are going in this new direction where they want to make the game more skill based than an overall better game and just don't want to completely milk the player base because if they do want to do that then i'm gonna you know probably find myself uh finding a new game fairly soon 
But anyway, I don't know. I have a little glimmer of hope with this update. A link to this will be in the description below. One of the final things, actually, that I want to quickly cover is uh, updates to Alliance War Notes. This also gave me a little bit more faith. Uh, we didn't do a video on it yesterday. But they're removing, uh, in a lot of the top tier ones, uh, some of the Fawns nodes. Uh, for node 10, remove Fawns completely. They're toning down some of the bonus health on uh, some of the, the Fawns nodes on node 14 there. So basically, you're going to take significantly less damage. However, I'd prefer like a complete revamp of Fawns rather than... Um, removing bonus health but it's a good start it's a good start node 18 you've removed fawns from challenger and expert difficulty that's good to see uh, they have removed heal block from node 36 so you can re use some regeneration champions to play around um, and they've removed like a lot of physical armor and resistance nodes the ones that would like stack it up to a crazy amount and also made a couple of changes to alliance quest to uh reduce the power gain on map six reduce the power gain on the uh, the first and second spider-man however this is actually like a bit of a it's actually a buff it's actually a very indirect buff to spider-man because a lot of the map six players the strategy when you fight spider-man is the level two is so much easier to evade than the level one so getting him to the level two and being able to evade that is just is so easy so that's actually a bit of an indirect buff to spider-man so a lot of people are like really dudes really but uh they removed the also un the unblockable buff from the second spider-man mini boss so that might make him a little bit, bit less BS because you can like fully evade the special one if you're super, super good. So that's that's pretty decent. However, I, d I don't know. Don't know about that. Don't know about that. We're going to have to see how that works in practice. Like there's a lot of question marks when it comes to Alliance Quest and Alliance War after the update. And then finally, uh, on map 5, replace power gain times 2 with power gain times 1.5 on the second Cyclops mini boss. Um, and, uh, what else do we have? This is the current short list of Alliance Quest changes, focused on mini-boss who are often... Yeah, I, I don't think, for, for Alliance Quest, especially with the increased prestige, it's not really about the mini-bosses. The mini-bosses, for the most part, especially in, like, map 5, have always been, like, quite easy to decimate. But maybe with the nerf to god tier champions, they might be a little bit more difficult. It's the overall difficulty now that a lot of sustainable champions have just been gutted from the game, like Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange. It, you know, you still do have options, but I'm interested to see kind of the difficulty tweak now that, you know, a lot of regeneration champions have been gutted. And also um, the fact that now you have significantly significantly less damage output on a lot of characters despite the boost of prestige like are they going to turn out turn down the scaling a bit i don't know we're gonna have to see there are a lot of question marks it's a it's a big time for the game a lot is up in the air don't know if it's going to end up being positive or negative, but we're going to have to see going on for the ride on this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a thumbs up. That'd be greatly appreciated. A lot of big question marks, but again, we're going to be running a lot of the Master Mode and Endgame content uh, this evening and this weekend, so we can give our full thoughts on kind of the current state of various aspects of the game. Although, I expect like a lot of the stuff, like Master Mode, to be very, very easy, because I rolled over it with three stars before the patch. So, we'll probably go in with three stars again and see like how i find it from that perspective i think that'll probably be the best to do so ladies and gentlemen thank you once again for watching hope you enjoyed the video take care and have an absolutely fantastic day